Well, ever since I've been a child, I've wanted to play with colour and textures, and I used to use wax crayons, I know, when I was little, and I used to like paint and getting messy and just sort of generally creating colour. And then I started, I guess, observing things more and uh, began to make 3D things using clay, plasticine, play-doh, and then developing that further. Paint maybe a scene, a sea, grass, mountains, and then I would build 3D on top of it. So that sort of became my interest of just generally being involved in the scene of something. All my work is based around experiences rather than looking at something and painting exactly what I see. It was very different back in those days when I was at university in the 80s because you had to get your film, take your pictures and then you were actually in the, in the dark room to develop and then hang these spirals of films up and let them dry. Um, and then from that you would look at everything with little uh, microscopes and just choose the images you wanted. So it became a real art to actually produce just one picture. My first um, exhibition was in a squash court in Canterbury um, and everybody again was above looking down so of course this was ideal for me because that's what I wanted people to be was looking down as if they were looking into the water so I made big uh, sort of swirly patterns out of clay and, and used various um, colourings to just sort of give them uh, the image of the water and the reflected light. Um, then people started showing an interest in my work after my first um, exhibition and we were allowed to sell our work so that was a great thing being a student so I was quite happy to start selling some work. Quite difficult as well to choose what to let go of because these things often take time and they were energy and often they were quite one-off creations of trying out new colours and new shapes, new form and we were using lots of different um, tools as well so I was really experimenting a lot so it was quite difficult at times to let things go, but the money was what I needed, so I started selling some work. And once you get known in a place, people come back to you. I first started painting properly on canvas when I had my dogs, because I decided I would paint them in the scenes of the places that they loved, which was sand. With the water coming in, they would run up and down on the beach, and we would use um, the shells and chuck the stones for them, and bits of driftwood and flotsam, and, they sort of generally quite interested in all that and then we used to create actual pictures on the beach just messing around while they were um, playing in and out of the water. My interest then in the sea really grew. Where we lived we had the groins on the beach so we would find lots of things growing on those and the sea would break on there. Um, I wasn't really doing a lot of photography then, I was just painting my ideas from sketches. I then decided that I would make my pictures have even more movement and they've almost become, part of them have become like a journey. So a lot of my pictures actually you, your eye follows up or down or there's usually things that take your eye from one place to the next, they're not static. And the colours are meant to represent the different ways that I see these things. They're not necessarily the true colours, but they're how I see things. The painting behind me of the sea is when I used to uh, dive and all I remembered really was the bubbles and the way that I, even when I was dropping down there would be my bubbles coming up from my breathing and then everything that I passed would have bubbles so by the coral there will be bubbles and that's what I actually took from that experience. Beautiful things going on in the sea. The painting that has the jellyfish in was something that I've never seen and I want to see a Portuguese man of war but I know that the tendrils go really long and that again was my journey for me, something that I want to see and I know that that brings different movements in a painting, all the other things I've seen but they're not necessarily the same colour, they're the way I want to reflect them. The painting on the wall was done for this room and it's the red colouring from the wall that's put onto the canvas um, and I use the colours just to reflect how I was feeling and the way that I wanted this room to be. I recently finished a painting which was based on a mountain which is near where I live and I watched the mountain for probably a year, maybe longer, and how it actually changed. So my painting that I've done is a snapshot if you are to look at it, but actually it's a sunset, it's a sunrise, it's light behind the mountain and then it's also got um, seaweed and some sea coming down from the burn on the mountain 
and that was from an experience of walking further round the mountain but seeing the water appearing with a almost like a type of waterfall. So this picture ended up being a snapshot but actually it took three years to complete and there were activities that had happened within those three years. The centre of it is this wonderful shape that's silver um, and that was found when we had a rock that we'd split open and it showed all the different layers of the rock and although it wasn't silver it was so bright um, that it became something that you would almost be absorbed by, by to look into. I used beading on this one to just represent the jewels of the sea as it came up because it was glistening in the sunshine and there were the shells and the sand and the beach and then in the frost I've written names as well um, and little hearts again because it was representing people. This painting represents my family. I went to Spain on holiday and the beautiful red flowers that I saw on the golf course um, just made me want to um, redesign those and use them in a painting. So the big flower is obviously of myself and the two smaller flowers are of my children and then there's a little tiny flower in the corner which we think was probably the cat. And then the um, butterflies in the background are my friends and they're represented there with um, family groupings and uh, different colourings. I'm doing this painting for my daughter because she has an obsession for ducks and we went along the River Spey on canoes last year and one of the things that we noticed was the amazing weeds that were growing with these flowers which apparently are weeds and people are trying to get rid of um, but we really liked them and the flowers were tiny but my memories of them um, were that they were quite big flowers and in between them there were ducks. I've now started doing metal sculpture after I was bought it as a gift uh, to try out and to experiment with and that has really taken off. I've built a tree using a MIG welder and the plasma cutter and just experimenting with pieces of metal that were left over in the workshop. I've started to design my own projects and uh, with my experience that I'm picking up from different artists we've been uh, developing work to go in Edinburgh um, and in different parks around Scotland so hoping to be part of that soon in the future. Uh, my tree was exhibited as part of the Metal Sculpture Emergence exhibition um, and lots of people make comments about that so you never know I might get some commissions from that soon. When I've been asked to paint for people it's been very difficult um, to actually produce a bespoke piece of work that reflects that person is not an easy task for me because these images that I create and paint come from me and what I experience. I have sold work um, and I will continue to do so if I'm asked um, but it has to be by, from somebody that can provide me with part of their life. So I was given once uh, some cushion covers, some photographs, some colours of their house and some places that they had been to and what they'd actually enjoyed. I almost have to have an interview with the person that wants me to paint for them um, because I don't want them to take my work because it's my life that they're taking, my journals, my way of thinking of, about things. I find it very relaxing. I find that it's something that gives me a way to just be absorbed in my memories and experiences that have meant something to me. My paintings reflect a journey, they're not just of one image. There are some collection of things that I've seen uh, that I um, want to express in my work. So quite often you'll have a painting that eventually finishes and it will be over a whole year of um, experiences that have gone on for me. So that's why the colours tend to be sometimes different to what somebody else sees.